The ruin-littered Kingdom of Hyrule seen in Breath of the Wild is arguably the most lore and mystery filled today, whilst also being one of the most bare bones, hollow and empty worlds. It's a really unique time frame that we've never seen before in the series, a post-apocalyptic world that at first looks beautiful with its nature and wildlife. But dig a little deeper and you will discover that this land has a dark and blood spilled history. For the most part, this current state of Hyrule is one of a lost past. Everything was taken from the people in the malicious rampage of Calamity Ganon. What we're left with is a landmass of mysteries, forgotten relics, and memories of the past. Now whilst you'd think almost everything has been covered by now, I mean a 3 year old game right? Almost 4. Well, you'd be wrong, because today we're going to take a deep dive into one of my all time favourite mysteries, unexplained relics and just all round phenomenal occurrences. The Existence of Tingle's Clothing. Nah, just kidding. We're looking at the cursed statue of Fernir for Hitano. Be sure to go and grab yourself a Christmassy snack or drink and send them in on social media to get featured right here. And let's take a look at the mystery of Breath of the Wild's cursed statue. Firstly, what exactly is the backstory of this statue? Well, it all begins at the lonely backline of Fort Hitano. Deep within the Nakluda region is Fort Heiteno, a once gritty and powerful line of defence between the fields of Blatchery Plain and the pathway to Heiteno Village. In the modern day of ruined Hyrule, we can find guardians and their masses crusted into the walls of the fortress in still hollow fields. On the other side, we can find a hut inhabited by one lone Hylian, Kalip, and this is where the story truly begins. If Link talks to Kalip and takes an interest in the conversation, we will begin to learn that Kalip is a researcher. He spends most of his time researching the ancient Sheikah shrines that rose from the ground, a technology that practically nobody understands. I mean, I would even say that Link doesn't even know everything about them, such as their creation. Kalip loves to boast about his accomplishments, going as far to say that his research is amazing and his work is too great to simply not be admired. He even mentions that he refuses, not prefers to, but refuses to tell his own family where he does his research. Kalip is obsessed with his work and at first Link is not on his good side, until Link calls him Doctor. You see, all Kalib wanted was for his work to be acknowledged and admired. Link calling him by his self-proclaimed professional title, Dr. Kalib, was enough to win the researcher over. This then gains the respect and trust of the doctor and he will begin to tell Link about his research and mention a research book of his, an ancient text. Kalib spells a passage reading, When a dark light resides in the cursed statue's eyes, pierce its gauge to purge the seal from the shrine. Kalib can be found either here in his hut or down the road and round the corner in this small opening within the rocky landscape. Within this little passageway, we can find a cluster of small deity-like statues half buried into the ground. Kalib spends a lot of time here trying to decode that passage and figure out what it means, so let's take a look. When a dark light resides in the cursed statue's eyes, this is referring to this statue, as at exactly 9pm its eyes begin to glow a mysterious purple. But why? Well, we don't know yet, but the rest of the passage reads, Pierce its gaze to purge the seal from the shrine. And if this is followed and Link shoots the statue in the eye with an arrow, a Sheikah shrine will rise from the ground. And that is the story of the cursed statue. Okay, thanks for watching, drop a like. Okay, we're not there yet, but that is basically the story of the statue from Link's point of view. But there are multiple huge questions, or well, mysteries about this. Why do the eyes glow purple? How and why is it connected to a Sheikah shrine? What exactly does purge the seal mean? And how on earth could Kalib not decode that message? I mean, come on, it's so simple. I revoke your title of doctor, good sir. Oh wait, you never even had it in the first place. Hmm. <laughs> Anyway, what is this thing? 
Firstly, let's take a look at the area and begin to look for any connections and hints towards our mystery. First and foremost, this appears to be a graveyard, and I have two main reasons to believe so. Firstly, the passage of an ancient text actually describes it to be a nearby graveyard, so yeah, case closed there. But another cool detail to note without this information is, if you look closely at knocked over pillars we can see, there is actually a symbol carved into the rock. It resembles the shape of a coffin if you ask me, and considering the placement of these pillars, I'd imagine they once acted as entrance points, so this likely has something to do with the dead. The next most obvious and clear connection is their one for one resemblance to some of the deity statues found across Hyrule. These are not exclusive to this location, in fact they are often used to set up Korok seed puzzles involving apples, eggs and various foods. Perhaps we are looking at some sort of deity graveyard? Appearance wise, that's the only real significant stuff to know. We honestly aren't given much to work with here. What intrigues me the most is the colour of the eyes. Typically this purple is associated with evil. Malice and Ganon. We know this as, for example, the sealed chests found within the enemy camps, surrounded and controlled by Ganon's minions, these treasure chests are locked with a purple malicious seal. However, upon the defeat of all the enemies controlling the camp, the chest will open and the eyes turn yellow, a colour associated with the goddess. This is an association with evil, which could indicate that this statue is also associated with evil. However, when the statue is released so to say, the eyes do not switch to yellow to indicate a release or a change. Instead, there is no malicious influence here. This simply has to be something else. But what? Well, when I first brought up these statues on the channel in an episode of Secrets of Hyrule a few weeks back, which you should totally check out afterwards for the card in the top right, I received a few comments from you guys telling me your thoughts, and one thing in particular stood out to me. The statues resemble Japanese Jizo statues. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. Jizo statues are commonly used, essentially, to pay respect to souls that didn't get the chance to be born. A way of honouring these souls is leaving objects such as hats, scarves, toys and even snacks, which we do see in Breath of the Wild, with the same statues being used for Korok seed puzzles. This is likely just an inspiration though, not an actual tie-in. It's believed that this helps comfort the child on their way to the afterlife. Thinking about this in terms of Breath of the Wild honestly gives the game all the more dark undertones, adding to the constant reminder of the many deaths this land had during the Great Calamity. This does make sense to some degree, as we already established earlier that this was likely a graveyard of some kind, strengthening that claim, and its association with the dead and afterlife. Knowing this, it could also explain why we see so many of these little statues across the land. The Great Calamity wiped out almost everyone. Ganon killed them all. They're dead. Every single one of them. But not just the men, but the women and the children too. The Calamity was relentless. These statues across all of Hyrule could be a reminder and way to honour all of the fallen younglings that lost their lives tragically to Calamity Ganon. But that's getting a little sidetracked from the actual topic. I was just thinking about that. Anyway, the signs would point towards this statue having some sort of connection to death, perhaps in an evil or corrupt sense related to Calamity Ganon. We know the malice spilled across Hyrule 100 years ago infected, corrupted and influenced many things. From guardians to citadels, mechanical beasts to living gods, malice is powerful and this statue could be a statue that was once on the side of light, much like Heiteno Village's soul stealing statue but became corrupt for one reason or another. That brings me to the assumption that this statue was in fact corrupt by Calamity Ganon's malice. But wait, we are forgetting one huge detail. That riddle. The riddle from the very beginning. When completed, it reveals a Sheikah Shrine. This statue cannot be evil in any way, shape or form if it's connected to the Sheikah, right? Well boy do I have a potential explanation for you. You see, what is the purpose of the Sheikah Shrines? To test the hero. Each of the 120 shrines beneath Hyrule's surface were created long ago by the advanced Sheikah people. To one day test the chosen one, the hero. 
Link. These tests typically include some puzzle solving, combat, and occasionally a technological test. That is the purpose of these shrines, testing the hero. I also believe that the reason the eyes of this statue glow purple is because it's all one big test for the hero. It's all making sense now, giving him the impression there is an association with evil, drawing his heroic instincts in to deal with it. In the same sense that Monk Mo's Kosha appears as a foe and physically attacks Link, but just to test him. This isn't a puzzle. This isn't a combat test, nor is it a technological test. I believe that this is in fact a psychological test of the hero, testing his instincts and mental ability to recognise evil and investigate. His reward? The Kam Urog Shrine. That's right. I personally believe that this so-called cursed statue isn't even cursed. Rather, it is a psychological test for the hero, which would also explain why Kaleep struggles to decipher this mystery, regardless of the fact that it's so freaking simple. Additionally to that, this conclusion would also indicate that an ancient text is in fact a book of Sheikah origin. It is never actually mentioned that this is Kaleep's book, just that he owns it. Perhaps he bought it or found it in the wreckage of the Calamity, but it's likely not originally his. Perhaps that message was even intended for the hero to see someday, but that's a bit of a stretch. That is my full thoughts and theory on the cursed statue in Breath of the Wild. I honestly believe that there is in fact no curse whatsoever and that the illusion of a curse is just a test placed by the Sheikah within a graveyard. The hero must be prepared for a situation anytime and anywhere. The only remaining question I have is, why do the eyes light up precisely at 9pm? It could be because that's the time I upload at European time every week, take note my fellow Europeans. But it's probably just because that's the average time of nightfall in Hyrule. A simple but understandable answer. Thanks a ton for watching, you lovely human. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like to support the channel and subscribe for more Zelda content. What are your thoughts on this mystery? Is there more than meets the eye? <laughs> Get it? Uh, funny. Anyway, be sure to leave a comment below with your thoughts. Also, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you who celebrate. I hope you have a good one despite these hard times at the moment. I love you all and really hope this video helps to make it that little bit more magical. A huge thank you goes out to my amazing supporters across both YouTube and Patreon. Your support really helps me out a lot and enables me to keep making these videos as often as possible. If you'd like to support my work here and guarantee weekly videos, then consider supporting via Patreon or YouTube. Again, thanks for watching, and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.